You're listening to the All American Actors Podcast, Episode 2. In today's episode, my very special guest is going to share with you how he went from a kid with a dream growing up in an English country town to building a career for himself as a working actor in the U.S. film industry. That's coming up next. Ready to go behind the scenes and learn what it really takes to build a sustainable career as a working actor in the U.S. film and TV industry? Join me, Catherine Beck, your all-American accent coach, as I give you the insight and inspiration to take action on your career. Learn my best tips and tricks to performing with an American accent and hear from working actors and other industry professionals to give you a comprehensive overview of this biz we call showbiz. This is the All-American Actors Podcast. I've got a very special guest joining me today. One of my clients is on the show with me, the wonderfully talented actor William Mosley. William is best known for his role of Peter in the Chronicles of Narnia, and since then he's become very well known both in the UK and then transitioning into the US film industry. Recent films include The Courier starring Gary Oldman, and he just completed filming the movie Land of Dreams starring Matt Dillon. He also made his mark in the U.S. TV series The Royals, starring as the prince for E!, their first scripted series. So excited for this interview, so let's begin. Hey, William. Welcome, and thank you so much for joining me on the podcast. Good evening, Catherine. Thank you very much for having me. I'm very excited to be here. You know, now we've known each other. I was thinking about this. I think it's maybe four years, maybe five years. I'm not sure. It's around four or five years already that I think I've known you. That makes me feel old. right? That makes me feel very old. (laughs) And I wasn't sure if you were going to be speaking in your English accent or your American accent, because usually when I speak to you, you're speaking in your American accent for practice. That's right. Usually, well, if I go into my American accent, I usually will speak to you like this and I'll lower my voice a little bit and then any uh, discrepancies in the accent you'll probably bring me up on and say, well, this is sounding a little tight. This is sounding a little tight. We're going to have to work through that. Um, But yes, to me, uh, yeah, usually I'm in my American accent, but I thought today since we don't have to work, I'm going to just be myself. Take it easy. So why don't we just tell the listeners just a little bit about who you are? Sure. Okay, so I'm, I'm an actor. I started out my career when I was 17 with the Chronicles of Narnia franchise, um, which is obviously hugely popular. And um, I then went on to, I then moved to America and I started making um, films and television. Uh, one of the TV shows that I made, which was very popular in America, was called The Royals. It was with Elizabeth Hurley. I played a, a, a British prince, I suppose, which was quite fun. And from there, I've gone on to work with um, Gary Oldman in a film recently, uh, The Courier, where I use an American accent. Um, I worked with Michael Caine in a film which is set to be released next year. I just finished working with Matt Dillon um, on a film in America. And um, yeah, so basically, I I suppose my my career has... uh, has uh, gone from strength to strength, I'd like to say. So, I mean, I feel like it has. You know, I was thinking about this the other day and how does the American accent play a role in my career? Well, I think the last five jobs have been in an American accent. Um, I think I've done one, two, three, at least four, at least four or five, the last jobs I've done have been in an American accent. So, American accent is obviously a huge part of my of my career and part of how I how I make a living. So yeah, it's a very important aspect to my life. So interesting to hear that because when we first met, do you remember what you said to me? The reason why we started working together. Yeah, I think I told you I probably couldn't do it. That actually I didn't know that I could not get it together with the accent. Um, I felt very unconfident. You know, I felt very worried a lot of the time doing auditions and I felt very nervous about it. I felt very self-conscious, you know, that I couldn't really express myself. Um, so yeah, it's taken me a lot of work 
but I do feel like my accent's pretty pretty good now. I feel like it's pretty strong, you know. But I still I still think I have to keep working at it, you know. If I was really um, if I was more disciplined, and I will start being now, you know. Every, so I think it's sort of like getting into the gym in January. Um, I'm gonna try and do it every day. You know, try and work an hour a day and be on it for an hour a day, and just make sure that I do my time and I work at it. And um, and then when I have an audition, you know, we 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 work together. And if I have a, a part, then we work. We work pretty pretty uh, religiously when I have a job. So um, so that's always very helpful. Yeah, it's interesting because you did, you came to me and you were very uh, unconfident, lacking confidence in your accent and you felt that it was forced and you had worked on the accent before, but it still didn't feel really natural. What do you think was the turning point for you where it started to feel natural and you felt confident in the accent? Um, I think the turning point for me was learning the basics, you know. You know, it was very important for me to learn that actually your tongue is flat in the mouth when you're speaking in an American accent. And when you're speaking in probably either an Australian or an English accent, your tongue is, especially the tip of your tongue, I can feel it now, it's like it's moving um, very quickly. Everything's moving around very quickly. Whereas the American accent is very relaxed. And um, I realized that. And then I also realized that, you know, learning... Um, what all the diphthongs were and, and learning like all the phrases that you taught me, you know, like uh, a big black bug, but a big, big black bear and the big black bear bled blood, like saying things like that over and over again. Like I know these rhymes now for, for life, I think. Um, and there was about 20 of them. I think I knew 20 rhymes at one point. So, you know, I really tried to get it together. Um, you know, I'll tell you the biggest problem with the American accent for me, really is, and I think probably a lot of people struggle with this, and you struggle with this, I think, with the Australian accent, is it's like knowing that you're not going to lose yourself by defining yourself with another accent. That's a really psychologically interesting thing, especially coming from England, where the people are very nationalistic in a way, like un underlyingly nationalistic. So it's always like, well, don't get an American accent if you go to America. Don't do this. Don't do that. You know, don't come back with an American accent. You know, we'll, we will never speak to you again kind of thing, you know? So I think in my head there was a massive, um, there was a massive emotional thing going on, you know, which I kind of had to overcome. Um, even my even my own parents were kind of like, oh, you're never going to get part of an American accent. It's never going to work for you. You know, you're too English. You're never going to get an American accent role. Like, and then I, I just started getting them, you know, and I started working at it, getting them. And, and I and now it's been a, a huge part of my, my career. Yeah, it's amazing to see how your career has grown since we started working together. And uh, as your confidence built in the accent uh, and you got one role and then another and another, it's been such a joy to see the types of projects you're now getting offered and this caliber of actors that you're now working with is incredible. What do you find when you're on set? So you're on a U.S. film and you're on set with all these incredible actors and everyone's American. What does it feel like that first day when you step foot on set and you're speaking your American accent, but yet you're English? So so paint us a picture. What is that like? Well, um, now I used to not do this, but now I stay in the accent all day pretty much. And still, I think there's sometimes weaknesses in the accent. I still have to be careful because I can start talking to somebody like I was working with Matt Dillon, you know, just recently. And my first day on set, um, I had a nine page dialogue scene with him. It was just like, it was, it was intimidating to say the least, you know, like I step, steps on set and they're like, right, we'll do the scene. It's nine pages. He was going to do it with Matt here at the bar. Oh my God, you know. Um, and fortunately he was very supportive, very helpful and we, everything went fine. I knew my lines very well, but, but the reality is preparation is everything. You know, preparation is, is the key to a calm life, is the key to a, a calm down set, a calm, you know, evening, a calm everything. Um, but yeah, when I'm on set, I'm in the American accent all day and then, if anyone ever comes up to me and they say, oh, this word is out a little bit, that word's out a little bit, I, I do my best to correct it. But, you know, I 
I try to commit to it as much as I can, you know, and watching Matt, he's such an American iconic um, actor that you almost just look at his body posture and you can get a lot from that as well. Um, so yeah, that's, that, that's kind of my process. Yeah, that's really interesting. And so talking about your process, what is your process whenever you have a U.S. audition or even your process in preparing for a role on set before you get on set? What, how do you prepare for it leading up to it, the audition? And then once you get the role. Right. So when I have an audition, I, um, you know, what, what can happen when you're an actor is like stress can ma- manifest itself in a lot of, um, in a lot of peculiar ways, you know, suddenly you're fine, you know, you're chatting like we are right now. And then you suddenly have to read your lines. Right. And suddenly there's this stress that happens, this kind of, um, anxiety, this nervousness, self-consciousness, and everything goes out the window and you think, well, how did I go from being like normal and good? Like I read these lines a few days ago and they were fine. And now I feel totally like I can't breathe and I feel, you know, like stuck and I feel like locked in. And that can even happen for an audition, you know, like that and specifically for an audition, especially having to go in and read for someone or having to turn the camera on yourself and you've asked a friend to come in. They can only, they've only got 10 minutes, you know, to shoot this thing with you. So how do you deal with, with stress, you know? Um, well, for me, because the accent doesn't learn, lend itself to stress, you know, as soon as you get stressed, you're getting tight, right? And as soon as you're getting tight, your um, body is seizing up, your mouth is seizing up, your everything. When you want the opposite to happen, you want to be able to, you want the accent to be able to be relaxed, to flow. You want the words to flow. You want the um, sounds to open up. You want to be leaning into the vowels, you know, but if you're stressed, you can't do that. So it's very, very important to manage stress, however you do that. And um, people do it in all kinds of different ways. You know, I, some people meditate, some people do, do, do yoga before they do an audition, but, or they go on set, you know, or they go for a run before they go on set, or they do all these kind of different things um, to manage the self-consciousness. I, I try to find the lower register in my voice because I know when my voice gets high pitched, it doesn't work for the accent. You know, it doesn't work for being an American guy. It, it doesn't sound right. So I try to lower my voice, try to calm myself down and I try to be in the scene, you know, and just try to be present. And then, and then I let the accent come through, through that. I let my preparation come through and then it begins to work. Yeah. It's interesting because everyone has their own method to their madness of preparing You know, and and it's harder when it's a different accent, you know, all of a sudden, it's like you say, there's that stress and anxiety that creeps in, you know, when it's so easy to do in your natural accent, but then when you're asked to do a different accent, all of a sudden, it's a whole nother thing. You know, what I think is also interesting is for Australian and English actors, you know, if you want to make it in, in Hollywood or you want to make it as an actor, specifically if you're Australian, you will need an American accent. There is, I can tell you right now, it's like having a car with no engine or a car with no steering wheel. If you want to like go to Hollywood, you want to be in films, you want to be in TV. If you don't have an American accent, you won't be going. I can tell you that much. Like you have to have an American accent. You have to have an American accent. Yeah. And also for the longevity of your career as well. Like if you decided not to have an American accent in your toolkit, let's say, and you just wanted to focus on English roles, stay in London and just work there. What would your career look like? Would it be very different to what it is now? It would be, my career would be very limited. And if I'd, if I had, you know, this is a big question. I ask myself a lot. I moved to America when I was 22 you know, and I moved there for 10 years. I've only just moved back to the UK really a year and a half ago. And I thought about that. I thought about why did I move there? And what is it, was it that drew me there? To be honest, I think it was the sunshine. I lot to do with the sunshine and the weather. But beyond that, I felt, and from a, um, a purely personal point of view, I felt that I, because I speak very well, actually, you know, I have a, I have a pretty crisp, clear what we would call an rp english accent right so 
that would limit me to roles within that sphere, that world. I couldn't play an East Ender. You know, I couldn't play like a rough drug dealer if I wanted to, or someone who was off the wall. You know, I couldn't, I could only play sort of within my ballpark. And that's kind of sad, you know, like, like there is a wealth of opportunities out there for you to choose interesting characters to find different parts. And so because there's no class within the American accent, because there is only, you know, one accent really, you, it opens you up to a million opportunities. And, and that's really is why I went there. And that's why I wanted to do the accent. And that's why it's been very important for me for us to work together. That's interesting. So then do you find as an actor that you've been able to expand the type of roles that you've been able to portray that, you know, that maybe you didn't think you'd be able to book in the American accent, all of a sudden, you're playing these types of characters that you never imagined that you actually would, but but because now you have the accent, you're able to um, push yourself in different areas that you didn't think was possible. Absolutely. The, um, you know, one of the roles I'm, I'm proud of, one of the roles, you know, that um, came to me very, very quickly, and I only shot for four days, um, but it was The Courier. You know, I played a, a sort of a deranged henchman, Gary Oldman's deranged henchman that goes around killing everybody. I mean, with my accent now, they would have never let me play that character. And I tell you, they wouldn't have let me play it the way I wanted to play it. You know, I would have had to have been like very, you know, calculating with an English accent and very manipulative and very quiet and very, you know, like very kind of bit like, I, I, I mean, this is a weird word to use, but bitten. I'd have been biting my teeth all the time. But with this, with the American accent, playing the American accent, I could just, I could unleash hell, you know, basically. And I could re go to a place that I wouldn't have been able to go to in my English accent. So to me, it was, although it was a very stressful four days, you know, it was, it was tough, you know, to get in that character. I'm really um, proud of the results. And as a result, and you know, this was a role that nobody really kind of, I don't think anybody really thought was going to be anything. And you know, suddenly I saw posters of myself on the a London underground, you know, and like a Christmas last year. And it was, it was really weird, you know, it was kind of crazy. I was like, this is, I thought it was just a tiny movie we shot in a car park, you know, but I got to do this American accent thing. And, and the director loved it, you know, and the accent, even he was specific about when I was doing my ADR, he's like, no, 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 get that cadence back, that, that, that American cadence you had. I was like, okay, so that was really, that was only through the months of, that was only through like the preparation that we'd done before, you know, that helped me to, um, perform that that part. In terms of that, was that Pencil Town that we had prepared before you shot the Courier? I can't remember. No, it was Pencil Town afterwards. After, okay. Um, so Pencil Town was another film that I was uh, I, I was offered this part to play an American Wall Street banker who you know ha whose father ends up dying and he has to go save his father's company after his father's past you know and it's really like a the arc of the story is that he he turns from being kind of a monster into a man you know and so that was quite a challenging role because every day I was on set speaking in the accent it was a dialogue driven film it was almost a play actually it could have easily been a, been a play and um the, and the director was American everybody there was American and you know I sit in the accent all day and one day the DP said to me, he said, oh, where are you from? And I said, oh, actually, I'm, I'm not from America. I'm from, from the UK. He said, what? Said, yeah, I'm actually from the UK. He said, well, that explains it. I was like, well, explains what? He says, well, we couldn't put a specific place down of where you were from, you know, where you, were, where you're, where you must have grown up in America, you know? And I was like, yeah. And I thought, oh, maybe that's, a problem you know maybe that's something maybe that's something that I could work on more you know like where's a specific place that this character's from right because we've talked about this before we talked about a general American accent general okay well, what does general mean there really is no such thing as a general American accent as you pointed out you know there is only 
um, regional accents of the uh, standard American, right? So you you're from the mid you're from Chicago. Uh, the Chicago area, yep. right? Would mm-hmm. you call that the Midwest? Midwest, yeah. The mid the, the Midwest, but that still has a kind of that still has an accent to it a little bit. Like you, I bet when you're you, you talk to your dad or you talk to your family, they have they don't have sort of a what you what you'd almost call an Anderson Cooper American accent. You know, I'm sure they have a bit of a a bit of something to it, a bit of flavor. Yeah, uh, yeah. So you know, if I try and sound a little bit more like I'm from Chicago, you know, it's got those hard A's and, uh, you know, we go get some deep dish pizza and some beer. It changes. And so, yeah, anywhere that you're from in the U.S., there's an influence and an upbringing. And that's why I say this general American accent is, while as an international actor, it's kind of what you strive for, but you can't stop you, you you can't finish at that generalized american accent because it's too general for the character you have to then look at the character right and say okay where is this character from and if they don't give you that information you have to create that history for yourself so you can find the voice of that character that american character voice specific to whoever you're portraying so that it doesn't sound like a a broadcaster voice, like um, a made up, yeah, accent that it really carries truth to whoever. So you're I have a question playing. for you, actually. So, so when you work, so when you listen to someone like you, you say a broadcaster, that's a great example, right? So, when you listen to like maybe if if anyone goes to America, you know, NPR, okay, NPR radio, um, they have a standard American accent, you know, Anderson Cooper, standard American accent. You know, all of these people have this standard American accent, but what exactly is that? Is is that an accent that they've worked on a little bit or they've kind of cultivated a voice for this job that they've got? And therefore, if we as non-nationals come in and then we sort of portray that um, that accent of the, the um, it, it wouldn't kind of like it wouldn't sound authentic totally. Yeah, you want you know? it to sound authentic to the character you're portraying. And I've gone from calling what I teach a general American accent. So I went away from standard American accent to calling it a general American accent because that seemed to fit better. To now, yeah. I call it an all American accent because. I don't like the idea of it being generalized or neutral or it, it just seems bland and too cookie cutter for me, that term general. And when I think of it as all American, that's really what we're striving for, to be as American as we possibly can. Like we were born and bred there and we have the voice yeah. of the American speaker. And so it really comes down to understanding the rules, the guidelines for an American accent, but then playing around with it to attach yourself, your voice and the character's voice together. So it becomes a cohesive thing that makes sense to you, makes sense to the character, makes sense to the script that you're working on. But every single actor that's auditioning for that same role is going to sound different. You know, whether it's an American born actor auditioning for that role or you auditioning for the role, you're going to sound different. So they're not looking for a specific, perfect way of sounding. They're looking for that truthfulness. Yeah, exactly. You know, Matthew McConaughey doesn't sound like George Clooney. Exactly. You know, know, I mean, Matthew McConaughey, I mean, it's like a joke. He does not sound, you know, he sounds Southern, right? He sounds to me, he sounds totally Southern, but it hasn't hindered his career, you know. I mean, I feel like, and I hate to say this, and I don't want to, like, throw shortcuts out there, but it's like, if you can find an American accent that works for you, like, if you can find, like, a way, I always think of it as, like, you're trying to find a way into the character. If you can find a way into your character, your character's voice, like, like go for it, you know? Really, truly just, like, make it happen, you know? I, I think there's so much... There's so much worry in acting of like getting it wrong, yeah. but taking a risk is always, it's always a smart thing to do. Always very smart. It is. And don't you find when you take those risks that that's when 
Sometimes that's when the good stuff happens and and you book those roles because you've allowed yeah. yourself out of your comfort zone. And the end result is often very exciting to watch on the other end. I totally do. And, you know, that, you know, I think I think one of the toughest things we all struggle with is, as humans is believing that we can do it. You know, you have to you have to even you might have demons in your head, like telling you, I can't do this. Like when I first came to you. I can't do this. I can't do this. How do I do it? How do I do it? How do I do it? I can't do it. I'm not good enough. I can't do it. It's like we have this like it's like we have this demon in our brain that like tells us all the wrong information that we need in order to like fail, you know. But we have to overcome those inner demons, you know. We have to overcome them, overcome them, and be like, no, I can do it. I can do this. Like I know I can do this. I know I'm strong enough. I know I can do it. And if you don't believe yourself, think of the things you've achieved in your life already that people would have said well that's impossible you know i think of the things i've done in my life from a tiny town that i'm from from a village you know we didn't even have a shop in my village like you know it, it's kind of crazy like I, if i reflect back you know i always think that i can do better i always want to do more but i didn't i didn't i, I didn't start with a lot you know i started with nothing you know and so um you know just it's that self-belief is is, is really the most important thing absolutely so where do you see yourself five years from now, let's say, in your acting career? Do you know, I hate looking ahead like that because it always scares me. But I do feel like I'm going from strength to strength. And, you know, I'm, I'm going to say it in the atmosphere. I hope it's okay. You know, more. But I wanted to change the trajectory of my career between you and me and everybody else listening. Um, I wanted to change the trajectory of my career. I felt, to be honest with you, and I described somebody like this recently. I felt like I was on a train going down the wrong track. Um, and it's not like uh, that's got nothing to do with um, my personal life because everything's fine. It's just to do with my career. You know, I saw my career kind of, I could have ended up pla plateauing and not being proud of the work I was doing, not being proud of the person, you know, the person that I, I know I can be as an actor. You know, I like, I wasn't, I could just see it myself not being happy, right? And, um, I didn't know how I was going to do that. You know, I don't know how I was going to like change everything. You know, I was, I just felt like the work wasn't, wasn't, you know, something that I was really proud of, you know, like the, the film projects weren't something I was really proud of. And it wasn't so, fulfilling you. Uh, I, and I think that's when we met is at a, a crossroads in your career is, is so accurate is you wanted something else yeah. for yourself. And I think well, actually, looking at the American accent, you, hmm? it wasn't actually, I just wanted to do one job in an American accent and do a good job with it when I met you. That's it? I really had a low bar for myself. <laughs> yeah. I just had a low, low bar. I was like a 10 kilogram weight that I just wanted to push up. I was like, please help me press this 10 kg weight yeah. over my head because I cannot do it. And then you really helped me to get through that, you know, and then you helped me to get up to like a 60 kg and like an 80 kg. And it was like, it was like training, you know? And suddenly I was like, yeah, I can do something. And then I, and then recently in the last two years was when I was like, okay, I'm going to change things up a bit for myself. Like I'm going to try to push, you know, push in a different direction. And so, and then I, I, I made that conscious decision and then good projects started coming to me, you know, really good ones started coming and I started taking them. And then even really recently, the most recent project I've done, I wanted to do an art movie. You know, I really wanted to do something beautiful and something meaningful and something that had depth, you know, and, and, and art to it. I'd never done one before, and I wanted, and I love those sorts of films. You know, I, you know, I, I love action movies and I love fun movies, but also I like art, you know, and I like beauty and things like that. So I wanted to do one, and then during lockdown. This art movie came to me, and um, and we ended up working on it, and it ended up and it ended up being pretty amazing, you know. Um, you know, it had like Anna Gunn, who was the lead in uh, one of the leads in Breaking Bad, Matt Dillon, who's like an American icon, you know. It had um, Isabella Rossellini in it, who's a really famous actress, and the director, she's a very famous visual artist, you know. She her name's Shireen Nishat, and she has an exhibition on at the Tate. You know, she has another one that was at the Broad in um, in America. She has like exhibitions all over the world, and I and it was weird that that's what popped up. You know, I put that out there. I put that consciously out there, 
and it happened, you know. Um, so I do believe in like some people would say it called manifesting your dreams. You know, I do believe in it a hundred percent. It takes work and it takes commitment and it takes like energy. But I think if you put that out there, the universe will bring it to you, you know, and the thing is, this is, this is what my philosophical point on it is. You have to rise to that challenge. You know, once the universe gives you something that you've asked for, you have to commit. You have to show the universe that like, I, I fully respect this opportunity. Like, thank you. Like I will not screw this up. And people screw it up for themselves in all kinds of different ways, you know, and one of the ways, and I'm going to say this so every actor can hear it. When you go on set, you must be committed to your job on time and polite. And those three things are very hard for a lot of other actors and people on set. And that sounds very simple. It sounds very simple, but it is not. And, you know, that's how you respect the opportunity you've been given. That's really great advice. It's funny, I was going to ask you if you had any advice for our listeners, specifically the international actors that want to pursue the American accent. But I think you just said it beautifully just now. I think that's amazing advice for any actor. Uh, But maybe we will wrap it up with if you have any advice specifically for actors that are from other countries wanting to pursue the American film and TV market and are working on their American accent, do you have any advice for them? Yeah, I think that my advice is you can look at me or you can look at another actor and, and you can think, well, they've got there, right? This guy's got there, like good for him like lucky him like how the hell do I get there like you know like what am I how why is anyone going to pay attention to me you know but you know magic can happen and it happens when you when you believe in yourself and when you come from a positive point of view and when you try every day and when you really you know push hard you know push kind but push hard and then things can happen. And you're like, well, how do I even get an agent? How, you know, because people will always say, how do I get a job? How do I get an agent? How do I make it happen? Well, you make it happen by writing something that you want to do, you know, shooting it um, on your phone, you know, putting it on the internet, seeing what people will watch it, see if people review it. You know, you just get a comment and see what somebody says on YouTube. And then you'll know. And, you know, people, those things get seen very quickly, you know? So there is no reason to sit at home wondering when the agent's going to call you. You need to get up, you need to write something, you need to get your phone, you need to get your friends together, and you need to shoot it. And you need to go out and you need to do it. And then, you know, you can always send a link to an agency of your film that you've just made. They could see your work, you know, like you can always you know, send an, send a link to a management company. Like I'm, I'm, I know I shouldn't say it because the managers would be like, you shouldn't be saying that, but <laughs> you should, right? You should get yourself Definitely. out there. You've got to get yourself out there. You've got to, you've got to get your work good, get your accent good, and then make a little film and send it to them and then commit it to film festivals, send it to all the film festivals. You know, even if you make $8 an hour, well, if you put $1 an hour into your work, if you're like you know, little film, your little accent, you know, job thing that you're trying to make happen. That's, that's, that's time well spent. So I'm all about being proactive. Um, and that's my advice. That's excellent advice. Thank you so much, William. I really appreciate your time here on the podcast, talking to our listeners and giving them just an inside peek to what it's like in your world as an actor. And it's been so lovely to catch up with you as well, because we haven't talked for, gosh, I don't know, a month or so while you've been on set on this amazing movie. So congrats on that and wishing you all the success in your career. And thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I hope you enjoyed today's interview just as much as I did. And if you're out there and you're thinking, you know what, I'm ready to start this new year with a bang to make this year the year that I follow my actor dreams, then let's get to work. I am hosting a free five-day American Accent Challenge starting January 11th. 
We're going to work in depth on your American accent so you can feel confident and ready for any audition that comes your way. Just head over to my website, katherinebeck.com slash challenge to register, and I'll see you there for the challenge. And if you ever have any questions you'd like to ask me, join me on Instagram at Catherine underscore Beck underscore. You can find me there, send me a DM, and let's chat. I'd love to hear from you, especially if you have any questions or topics you'd like to hear me talk about on the podcast. Go ahead, send me a DM on Instagram and let me know. And coming up next time on the show, I am going to share with you my actor's guide for pilot season 2021. We are going to look at what to expect or not to expect this year. Now make sure to share the show with all your actor friends, let them know what's coming up next time and invite them to tune in with you and learn how to become the all-American actor so you can be the working actor you dream to be. Until then, go practice your American accent and I'll see you back here next time.